Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading. This is going to be uh, for your next uh, four biggest changes in 2024. I have like a little bit of weird scheduling thing going on here. So uh, I need to get on the right schedule for the reading. So that's why we're doing a random reading. But you have this wolf card and this panther spirit. The wolf card is kind of about like fierce independence or uh, being fiercely independent in, uh, you know, it can be in this deck. It can also actually represent um, family and, you know, spending time with family and things like that, which I do think some of you could be doing. Uh, but with the panther there, which I'll show you in just a second, it looks to me like you are uh, kind of like cleansing toxic energies from your life. This could be literal or it could be more like, um, you know, certain people or certain situations that you kind of see as toxic or stealing your energy. And it looks to me like, you know, your first big change in this row is very clear that you are ending um, toxic cycles. The nine of swords is a never ending nightmare. The Nine of Swords is something that is like a round and round situation where it's like you, ha you have a nightmare, you wake up and you're stuck in the nightmare. So I kind of feel that for a lot of you, you are ending, um, you know, some sort of challenge or nightmare uh, that's been going on in your life. Oh, I, I love both of these cards. They're both very, very positive. I, I don't think I've ever had these two together, believe it or not. I've been using this deck for about 50 years now. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't think I've ever seen those two together. So... That's pretty interesting. Um, I definitely like those two cards. But uh, so this um, Panther card here, it kind of represents, um, you know, clearing up toxic vibes or clearing up something that is toxic from your life. And like I said, that's what I feel like you're doing here. It looks to me like you are doing some healing. Actually, you have the Three of Swords. Um, you know, I, I think the Three of Swords gets a bad rap. Like, sure, it can represent a breakup or a separation. But, uh, you know, it's raining on the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is meant to represent a temporary situation. It's not meant to uh, represent something that goes on and on and on. So, you know, to me, sometimes I feel that the Three of Swords is more of a card of forgiveness, which it is. It is a card of forgiveness. And uh, kind of like forgiving the past. It doesn't say you have to like, um, you know, forgive a person directly or anything like that. It just kind of says that you are forgiving the situation and moving on. You're pulling those swords. You know, the part of it that is hurting you is what you're removing from the situation. And you have the nine of swords here. Um, I'm getting like, this could be society <laughs> as well. It's like, um, you know, I don't like have a good example for you, but it's like, if you blame like uh, social media for the, the, the state of dating, for example, right? It's almost like you are are forgiving society for some of you with that three of swords it's almost like in the forgiveness it brings you the thing that you want which is pretty weird you know because i have these weird words popping into my head like rare um it's like maybe you think that um you know having a person who is committed and you know isn't um you know whatever like dating a bunch of people at once on social media or something like that um i don't know it's a weird story that's popping into my head like i said so it's like maybe you think that uh, finding that is almost impossible but it's almost like when you forgive it um you know not like literally but i'm you know i'm kind of like saying more just forgive the energy that's when things turn around um it could be the same thing for money or you know whatever it is you're trying to improve here taurus um you know i think like once you forgive whatever you think the issue is uh, it's almost like that's when it's corrected i don't know kind of weird but there you go uh, you have the nine of swords like i said ending a nightmare uh the good news in this first row for your first big change is that you have the page of cups and the page of pentacles which number one could be new love you know blah 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 who cares number one <laughs> number two uh this could, is like good news uh i look at these two together especially when they come up together as receiving some sort of good news um you know like approval uh it could just be a new beginning where you're moving on from something toxic with that nine of swords um you know something that's been repeating over and over and over again so i just feel that's more like a new beginning i don't really feel you know it could be a person sure you know new person but I feel it's kind of like, uh, you know, a, a brand new day for you. This reading is the, the dawning of a new day, right? <laughs> yeah, look at this. With the Nine of Swords, you are definitely leaving something behind. Um, it's funny that I said society because, you know, on the chariot, he is leaving behind the city, behind and behind. So he is completely moving away from the place where he has always been. You even have this journey card next. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, the reason he's leaving the city is because everything is the same. And so, um, you know, again, I was getting that weird message at the beginning. I was getting something about how it's like, you know, uh, there, there's definitely a lot of evidence that something is true. And, you know, I think that a lot of people make the mistake in life, actually, of thinking that they're going to be the exception to a rule. Right. And so and but that like rarely ever happens. Usually we are not the exception to a rule. But I almost do feel it's like. Maybe it is harder to find a person or whatever, but it's like you are going to 
get that rare exception or find something that is the rare exception. Like same thing in work or business. It's like maybe a bunch of businesses are failing around you, but you're actually rising up. So, you know, I, I hope this is making sense. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a message like this, <laughs> like that in, in a reading. With the Three of Swords, you have the Wheel of Fortune. The wheel is coming back around. So, you know, I, I feel like this is true for everyone. I think the Karmic Wheel is coming back around and we all have a choice to make. We can make the same old choice or we can make a new choice. Uh, I know I'm speaking very generally here, but any, any like anything that comes up in your life right now where you've done it before and you made a certain decision, just make the opposite decision, right? Just do something different. And uh, that's how you can take control of the wheel. It's almost like, um, you know, for example, if you have a habit of, uh, you know, letting your bills go, a bill comes in, you just put it on the shelf, you ignore it. It's like, is there something else you could do? Could you, um, even if you can't pay it, right? People always love to leave me comments. They're like, I can't pay my bills anyway. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you could maybe call the company and just tell them that you can't pay it. It's like, what, what, you know, maybe they're willing to work with you. Maybe they would do something, but just doing something differently is what will change your life with the Wheel of Fortune. Um, but this could be anything. Again, it, it's it's almost like there's a karmic opportunity. I, you know, not like a karmic. I, I don't like that word anyway. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, something energetic that you've done before and you're having an opportunity to do it different this time. Uh, with the Page of Pentacles and the uh, Page of Cups there, you have the Six of Pentacles. Yeah, no longer accepting, you know, like half-assed energy. I think that we're into this energy of whole-assing one thing. So I think that you're going to allow people into your life if they're willing to, you know, whole-ass whatever it is they're doing with you. And, you know, there you go. Uh, th there's your first big change that you're meant to hear this year. Uh, for your next big change, you have this journey card and this mature woman card. I think your life has been a journey. Um, you know, you could be, you don't have to be a woman, of course, but I do feel the mature woman is you. Uh, even if you're not a woman, doesn't matter. I think it's just a mature person, right? And I think you've been on this long journey. Uh, it, some of you could be moving or traveling, by the way. I mean, chariot, journey card, but, you know, I kind of feel this ca journey card is a little bit bigger picture in your reading. I think it's more talking about the journey. That you, that, that you have been on that has caused you to um, move away with from something with the chariot or to, you know, try at, at least try to be the rare exception, right? And, um, you know, I kind of feel like you are the rare exception here, uh, which is interesting. Uh, you have the lovers, the two of pentacles and the ten of swords. Some of you, this definitely could be, you know, some sort of ending, um, that I, I kind of feel like this is an ending that has happened, but because it, it's interesting, we go also two of pentacles to the six of pentacles. Again, you have the six of pentacles twice here. So there's definitely something about um, like your value, I would say, showing up here. Even the lovers traditionally is kind of like a card of, you know, like morals and ethics or values and finding a person that has the same values as you. But I kind of feel like just saying people, not person. <laughs> so I feel for some of you, um, that this is talking about all people in your life, your relationships, and you could be looking at the values or, you know, what you get from, you know, it's not like about what you get, but it's like you bring certain things to connections, they bring certain things to connections, like does it add up, you know? And that's more the, the feeling I get here. Uh, you have the two of pentacles. Yeah, work hard, play hard for sure. Uh, everybody gets this right now, eight year, you know, 2024 adds up to eight. So I think that it being an eight year, we could definitely be more focused on work or working or, you know, putting more work into things or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, you know, that's what I'd say there with the two of pentacles. Uh, you have the ten of swords. Ten of swords is something that is dead done over with. So I feel for some of you, uh, you are releasing something in your life and you're kind of, you know, I feel like there are blessings that are coming in for you with the ten of swords. Ten of swords can be a blessing in disguise. And so, um, you know, some of you, it's weird that this is coming up as a next big change because I feel that this is something that's already happened this row. Uh, so, but again, you could be looking at past relationship losses and you could you could be seeing the blessings that are in those losses, you know, or you could be seeing like how they're a blessing or something. Uh, let's see. With the lovers, you have the sun here. It's funny that I said per sun <laughs> with that, with the lovers card. Uh, I knew that something was gonna happen there. So you have the sun and the sun is of course a card of happiness. You know, I really feel your next big change is uh, kind of like you, you know, it's almost like, you know, it, what's weird is I I did readings like this a couple years ago or whatever. And it's like everybody was getting like one big change, right? And like very few people were getting actually four changes. Uh, this year, everybody has had like four changes that show up in the reading, you know, at least. Um, I could probably get more if I pull more cards, right? Um, but you, it looks to me like there is like kind of more one big change that's going on in your reading. There are some like little things here and there. But, you know, I would say this reading is more about you taking a leap of faith towards something that is clearly going to make you happy. You have two great cards of happiness uh, and also fate, you know, Wheel of Fortune with the Fates card here. 
So it's almost like you're kind of like the rare exception that is going to take a leap of faith towards something that is like faded for you. And and that's exactly why it's going to work. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Uh, I like it though. Uh, with the two of pentacles, you have the ace of cups. Ace of cups is your emotions overflowing, being very happy. I do feel some of you could clearly have a choice in love. You have the page of pentacles, page of cups, up to the ace of cups here. I, I feel like you need to go for the the like rare exception is what I would say. It's like, you know, it's like maybe you're there, you have a choice between a past person or someone you've known and a new person. I would say that, you know, this reading is definitely encouraging a risk maybe on the new person. Yeah, with the nine of swords, you, I'm sorry, with the 10 of swords, you have the nine of swords. I feel the blessing, you know, this is you releasing things that just aren't working. And, you know, that's why I was getting blessings. You know, like I said, you might, you might be saying, Oh, Ten of Swords is the worst card. It actually it's not. Um, you know, to me, the Nine of Swords is the worst card in the tarot for sure. <laughs> and you have it twice. But I don't necessarily think that um, it's talking about anything bad. I think that you're ending toxic cycles. This is it, it, the Ten of Swords can be a blessing in disguise. And I think that there are blessings in disguise coming in because you're ending. You know, you're getting rid of toxic things from your life, plain and simple. Uh, next for your third big change. Um, you have this card that says, don't soothe your pain with momentary pleasures. You have this designer, it says, find a creative strategy to improve your finances. I was getting something about that, like bills or you know something along those lines, but I definitely see your finances improving. I mean, I know that your finances are gonna be improving over the next few years, so I wouldn't even worry about it, especially if you're nurturing things, even if you're not perfect. It, you know, If you could just do like a little bit of something, I think that that would be enough to greatly, you know, improve your finances. That could be about like, could be like learning how to improve your finances. Uh, could be adopting some sort of habit that improves your finances. Um, you know, it could be anything really. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's like about putting the energy together, right? And I think if you do those things then you're gonna improve your finances and it looks to me like you are. Um, you have the uh, Fool, Six of Pentacles and the Five of Wands. Fool is about taking a leap of faith. And I do feel the whole entire reading is basically saying you have an opportunity to take a big leap of faith towards something that is clearly going to make you very happy. We just said this, and um, you know I would definitely take the leap of faith towards whatever this is. It looks like something new, um, you know, like a new opportunity, something that you've never done before, something that sets you apart. So it doesn't even have to be new. Um, you know, we were talking about this with the chariot at the beginning of the reading. It could just be, you know, every, maybe you have a business, maybe everybody does it one way, or you're doing it completely a different way. And, you know, that is one example of what, you know, what you could do with a chariot. Could be in your love life as well. Again, like like I said, maybe you're looking for that rare exception. Maybe everybody's telling you like, oh no, this is dating, do things this way, but you're actually doing things differently. And by doing that, you're like standing out. <laughs> uh, like I always say, it's like everybody's the same right now in dating. So it's like, if you do something different, uh, you're gonna stand out. And it looks to me like that's what you're trying to do here in some area of your life. It's gonna be different for all of you. Uh, you have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is planting seeds. I really see this row as like your next big change is improving your finances. This to me says that you're kind of like demanding your worth. You could be raising your prices. Um, you know, things like that would be a really good idea, I feel, with this energy. Uh, adding adding things in. You know, if you have a business, like adding services or maybe adding more prog uh, products and things like that. If you have a job, get asked for a raise. Um, if you're retired, you could be learning about investing or, um, you know, you could be doing something on the side or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, you know, I think it's a great time to get started. Uh, you have the five wands, believe it or not, really good card for money. Uh, five wands can be conflict and, or competition. Again, I kind of feel this is also, you know, tying into the whole rare exception thing that I was getting. Um, five wands, conflict and competition, but it's almost like if something's for you, it's for you. And I kind of feel that's what this is saying. Also, I call five wands Indiana Jones. Uh, to me, it's a card of like going on some sort of crazy adventure so that you can get some gold. So I feel like there could be some gold coming in for you with that card. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is going on for you here? Sorry, uh, that's like the 10th time I've done that <laughs> where where the deck is upside down. Uh, with the uh, Fool, you have the Knight of Wands. Yep, definitely an adventure. We talked about this with the Chariot. Um, I think that the adventure you're going on is more like you're, um, you know, you're kind of like working towards something. You're, you're doing things differently. With the Six of Pentacles, you have the Knight of Cups, Knight in Shining Armor coming in for you. Some of you, this could be love, uh, clearly. I mean, Ace of Cups, Lovers, Sun, the Knight of Cups. There could be a very solid connection coming in for you. I feel it's a faded connection. Uh, could be any sign. You always get Leo with me. Uh, you have Cancer, could be a water sign, could be an Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus, or Leo. Uh, could be any sign. Uh, so take it how it resonates, but definitely could be a solid connection. 
Uh, with the Five of Wands, you have the Queen of Wands here. See, like another card of standing out is what is what I would say. It doesn't matter what gender you are. Um, you know, Queen of Wands, she stands out. Uh, she has that black cat there. Uh, the story of the Queen of Wands is, and, and you have the Panther right there. Like, are you kidding me? You, you have a black cat right there as your first card. Um, you know, the story of her is that she has a black cat and the black cat represents the fact that she doesn't care what people think. Um, you know, during the times of tarot, black cats were considered unlucky, but again, she doesn't care what people think. She just likes her black cat. And um, so she stands out for marching to the beat of her own drum, which is exactly what it seems like you are doing here, um, Taurus. It seems like you're, <clears throat> before I choke here, before I choke live on camera, which is why everybody watches me, it just watch me choke, right? Um, but you have that, uh, you know, that Queen of Wands is like saying stand out. You have this Happy Happy card and this Fates card, two of my favorite cards in this deck. Again, I don't think I've ever seen seen these two come out together that I can think of, but, um, you know, something is definitely faded in your life. And, uh, you know, the Happy Happy card says whatever it is, is going to make you very happy. She is like channeling happiness on the Happy Happy card, like through the top of her head. So she's channeling it from source. And I literally feel you could be um, channeling happiness. You have the Nine of Cups, the Magician, and the Ten of Wands. So this is your uh, fourth big change that could be coming in for you. A lot of happiness, like I said, um, but also total fulfillment with the Nine of Cups. I kind of just feel, I don't like feel anything traditional on the Nine of Cups. I feel that the Nine of Cups is more saying that a big change for you is that you're in a better position to make decisions. It's almost like you're in a, uh, um, you know, you're in a position where you don't have to worry about something. It could be money. Like, you know, if obviously, you know, it's almost like you're just sitting pretty. It's almost as if you're not necessarily doing anything, but you have the ability to if you want. <laughs> and so I hope that makes sense. That's like what I get here. It's, it's I wouldn't even call it comfortable because, you know, I think that some of you could be getting better than comfort. You could be, you know, kind of exceeding your expectations and that could really be putting you in a good position. Uh, you have the magician and the magician says you've attracted this year. You know, the magician has mastery over all the suits in the tarot. He actually has all four suits here and they represent the four aces. And so I feel for a lot of you, it's kind of like you, It's I'm, I'm almost getting like dealer's choice. You know, you have the choice to choose what you want your next new beginning to be. Uh, we're gonna pull, I always pull the card that he's pointing to here. I'm gonna say that it's this deck right here. And Larry, are like, are you freaking kidding me? You have the privileged lady card. So you go from mature woman to privileged lady. It doesn't matter what gender you are. We're just gonna say privileged person. So I feel like you are getting into this place of privilege, which is nice. Uh, you have the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is about carrying a heavy burden. So I feel for a lot of you um, that the Ten of Wands is saying like, don't make things so hard, right? <laughs> uh, I feel pretty good about the reading in general, but I do feel that like that Ten of Wands is encouraging you to make sure that you don't make things too hard this year. With You have the um, Two of Cups, so definitely could be a solid connection coming in for you. Again, you could be attracting a person where you don't really have to, um, where you won't have to work or something like that. So, you know, this could be a very solid connection if you want love. I would say it's definitely someone who's different than your usual type. Two of Cups is meant to be two people who are very different. So there you go. Uh, with the Magician, you have the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords is about tactics. Um, I think everybody needs to do this right now. It's like, yeah, this can represent li uh, lying, cheating, stealing, but really uh, the golden cards in the tarot are meant to be positive no matter what. And so, you know, the Seven of Swords, he is stealing those swords from an army in the background. And it kind of says that he's going to war, but in a different way. And I think that this is, again, true for everyone. I think everyone alive right now needs to look at whatever goal you're trying to accomplish, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And you need to say like, is there a better way? Is there another way? Is there a different way? Is there another route I can take? Like, what is it? <laughs> uh, can I learn something new as well? That's a big one. Like, you know, instead of just like doing what you've always done, can you just go learn a new technique, a new tactic, a new way? And if you do that, you will be very successful. So there you go. With the Ten of Wands, you have the Seven of Pentacles. You have two sevens. Um, two sevens is internal fears that don't exist. So, you know, definitely would be a good time to release your fears. But, um, you know, Seven of Pentacles can be a change in direction as well. So I think there's like good stuff coming in here. You have this woman card. I feel like this is you again, even if you're not a woman. And you have this dragon card that says, beware of self-delusion. Yeah, I would just make sure to trust the evidence. I think we all do. You know, I think, I don't even think this is self-delusion. I think that a lot of us, Sorry, um, you know, I dropped her, but uh, you know, a lot, I think a lot of us could have the fears or like we could have the fear that we're not going in the right direction. But I think the self-delusion thing here, and we're the, in the year of the dragon, by the way, um, but I think the, the fear of self-delusion is, um, you know, more that we, 
we, we need to trust the evidence. So it's like we won't be delusional if we look at what we're working on and we see that there's evidence that we're going in the right direction, meaning there's progress, there's a result, we're getting a result, we're moving closer to the goal or whatever. There will always be obstacles. There will always be things that get in the way. But you know, for the most part, are you going in the right direction? And I feel like that's what that's asking. And you have this nest card. It says loving, emotion, an emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. Yeah, if you want love, you definitely could be um, meeting a person you'll have a family with. You have this leg card, it says stepping into a new experience. The whole entire reading is a new experience. So <laughs> very new for you, Taurus, right? You have this bad card, it says something important such as a new job or a new raise. Yes, love it, definitely very good. You actually have these two cards at the end. Uh, you have Haystack, it says karma, you will reap what you have sown. We talked about karma in the reading. Yeah, I literally said that. I think I said something about karmic or karma at the beginning of the reading. It's almost like something is coming back around. I like I wouldn't call this a test, but you know, again, I, I would just pay attention to what's going on. You know, if you have a repeat situation, something something coming back around that looks like something you did in the past. I'm not saying it's not like a past person or anything. That's not what we're talking about here. It's almost like it, you know, the feeling I got there on the Wheel of Fortune was that there's a situation that's coming up, like, you know, it could be in work or business or whatever, could be in love. But, you know, I think it reminds you of the past and it's saying, like, are you going to do the same thing again or can you do something different? Just do something different. It's that simple right there. You have this rooster card. It says an arrogant, boastful person you should not cross. I would definitely be careful of anyone like arrogant or boastful, but uh, this looks like a very good reading. Very interesting as well. So, Love it. Thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your year.